anytime you go, you give two, you have two five and a mages, and three five on threes against, and you don't lose the game. You're lucky. That's, you know, you can't, you can't play hockey like that. I, and expect to win. It just, it just kind of destroys the game. One from a personnel perspective, two of your players get kicked out of the game, and two from a fatigue factor because now you're playing with you know ten or eleven forwards and five feet. So um, I thought RPI played really hard. I thought they played it really hard all the way to the end. And um, their power play was successful, going two for eight, and as was um, pathetic at over eight. I told the team afterwards we played three games in the power play and there's like one for 20 something. I mean, that's just not going to work. Power play can bail you out of games, sloppy games, bad ice. In away games, your power play can be on fire and you can win. And our goaltender has been, has, has been terrific for three games. And, um, <coughs> I've said to you guys before, your, your power play is your offensive catalyst. And it's really ugly when your power play doesn't even generate any. I'm going to say goddamn chances, and they didn't take any goddamn chances the whole night. The whole night. I mean, I don't know what we had the chances. So, we got to figure it out. That's on the coaches. we got to sit down, we got to figure out, we got to put the right people together and give us some, some sort of uh, belief that our power play is actually going to be able to generate offense for us, and then the goals will come. Can you comment on the physicality of tonight's game? And why it was such a physical game? Well, RPI plays hard, and they, they were out in Colorado when we watched the tape there, and they were running around the corners, hitting everything. And, you know, I think, I don't know what he is, this is for Seth, but he's trying to build his culture there. And, um, you know, obviously he's he's created a culture where they play really hard, they fall through with every check. The other thing they do exceptionally well is they put their, everything from their toenails to their teeth in front of pops and block them, which is impressive. Uh, and there's clearly a reflection of the team that's buying into the to their philosophy there. So, you know, I think I, I like the fact when there's a hit that I like my team to hit back, so I think it goes both ways. But it's just the way they play. They play like that at CC and in that big rink they got out there, and they were falling through with every check, so give them credit. That's a little philosophical. How do you stay, how do you teach the team to stay out of the box, particularly with the major penalties? I mean, I don't know, like the major penalties, I think, I think you know, like the, the Zach Stone penalty. I couldn't see, so I can't comment. It was to the left of the bench. But Goose is right in front of the bench. And the bench called him before the referee. Like, what are you doing? You, know, you just can't go up to a guy and cross check him in the back and think that that's, that's not going to be a penalty. I don't know. You know, it's funny because I had the same thought when I was on the bench after Goose. I'm like, what the F? You know, like, well, what, what don't you, what don't you get here? But how, how do you do this? How do you do this knowing that you're going to be sitting in the penalty box? And your teammates are going to be short-handed. And the guys that really should be should be pissed off are the guys that are out there in those five on threes blocking shots, like McLaughlin and Duke and, and um, Elliman, Daniels and Alexia. They did a great job, but you know, that kid Polacek can pound the puck. He's, he's teeing it up. I'd be pissed if I were them. I'm, I'm, I'm taking this this rubber for you because you've got to be dumb enough to take it back. The answer question, I don't know. I shouldn't say this, but we really can we can set them, but we're down on the last class of the Mohican, so to speak. You know, a lot of bodies left. So I hope that what happens is the moon gets upset and the moon throws some dots it's kind of at the right? It's gotta be, but you know, you know any, any team like that like any team that's got a sense of like responsibility to themselves really has a has a sensitivity to like their teammates, they just, they don't do that. Some of them, have, you know, like the penalties, some of the penalties are penalties, and that's that's why they have referees, you're gonna have penalties. But some of the ones when you just decide, I'm gonna whack a guy, hit the face off, and give somebody a 5 on 3 for a minute and 52. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's not good. So, Silva was getting some, some ice late in the game in some big spots. Talk about what you saw from him tonight then. I question. thought he was terrific. I thought he worked so he really hard. Um, you know, Stevie. Stevie's one of those guys. Like I always say, you get guys in your team that are reliable guys that are going to show up every game. 
I don't care if it's a consolation game or a championship game, they're going to be there and give everything they got. That's Steve. And uh, I wish um, that he was rewarded with more points because I think he had an assist tonight. So, But I think he, he, he's a kid that just has a drive to play and he's got pride in what he does. Um, and I know that uh, he wants to have a good year. He had, he had 20 points his, his sophomore year and dropped down to some small number last year. And I was determined to have a good year this year. Two freshmen tonight that stepped up real big on the offense. Talk a little bit about their performance tonight. Is it Jamie and Delgado? Mm -hmm. Delgado. Um, Delgado came in against BC, and we didn't know what we were going to get out of him. He played for Toby Harris down there in New Jersey, and he kind of had a unusual year, um, but Alvy likes to play the player and leaves him. And, uh, he's visible. I mean, against BC, he was running around. He's physical, fearless, fast. He gets on tucks quickly. He moves his feet on the cycle. I thought the best best play of the game for us was when he got the puck after he scored. And he went around the circle. He snapped and kept waiting. Bullet over the hit the goalie right in the shoulder. If the goalie was three inches shorter, it would have went in. But um, He's an energy guy that, that's, that's found a role, and um, I think he's got a real good future here. Alexiak, I mean, you watch him play, right? And he's 17 years old, and I, I reflect on, I had Zdeno Charo when I was in New York, and Zdeno was like 19 then. And there are some similarities, but um, they're different people, like they're very different personalities. And it's like Alexiak gets better every day, like not just every game, like every day in practice. He's very coachable. He's low maintenance. He's a good student. Um, I think he takes care of everything so that when he plays hockey, he can just focus on improving. Um, he hit the crossbar off the faceoff after he scored. Snapshot. His breakout passes are unbelievably simple yet efficient. Um, you just got to keep working on him and his positioning. And he obviously, he's got, he's got a really, really bright future. He's, he's got national hockey league. Coach, you had uh, Cody on the pivot tonight. What have you seen from him first first three games, first two games, I guess, practices that made him earn the spot? He played, he played uh, center and D at Governor Dumas, so Governor's now, he put the Dumber out. So he played center and D there, and we had Daniels go out with that injury, so we needed the center. Um, he's an 18-year-old kid. You know, I always get nervous putting young kids in the middle, particularly down low in defense, because they get a little nervous sometimes. But um, he watched him in practice, and he seemed to be comfortable with it. And um, I thought he was really good tonight. I got, I got, you know, I got to goose, goose him about some of the decisions he makes at the offensive blue line. You know, it's the turnovers. But um, again, he's a. You talk about the freshman. I think all the freshmen have scored goals for us this year, and uh, he's 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 going to be a terrific player. And I think as he gets more comfortable down low, his offense will get better too. Coach, even though it was only the third game of the year, I mean, both teams just played with so much energy. Is it almost like, like there is just this urgency that we have to win this game type of thing, or, or just? I didn't really feel that, you know. <clears throat> I just wanted to, like, cause I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out what we are. Like, they only have four, four freshmen playing, and mm -hmm. I think we had eight or nine. And then you throw Guzier and you throw Quayler in there, and they're back after a year off. So there's a lot of pieces here that. I really don't know what they are. So I've just been trying to focus on the process and see what we can do. Like, you know, you see we're shifting lines around. So what we can do to kind of maximize the personnel. Um, and I think Sebastian made a point to me, which was pretty interesting, is that I think we got 16 or something, 15 or 16 freshmen and sophomores. So they're a young team. And I hate using that because it sounds like, oh, it's okay, we're a young team, because that's a bunch of crap. There's a lot of young teams in the league. But I think... Um, you know, I think that we're starting, I told him we're starting to see some things that are going to be, I think, maybe some glue that's going to give us that 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 image we're trying to create. And um, it's going to take some time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, much. Thanks, Thanks